The eleventh Piatti Caprice is one of my personal favorites because it really draws upon the two cello phenomenon. The two cello phenomenon meaning that as a single player, we are both representing the harmony, the melody, and the counterpoint to give it an effect as if we're playing a duet with oneself. Number 11 starts with a very sort of almost religious choral element, which lasts only about eight bars. Important in these chords to try to get them to ring as um, sort of a half moon. I'm hitting the G string by itself, then G and B, then B by itself, then B and G by itself. I'm doing this to avoid this type of um, uh, du dual pitch approach, which would be with the four note chord, I'm actually having um, many different placements. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six locations for the bow, all done in a swoop. Then we continue. Then we have an arpeggio up the D string. Usually executed in harmonics as it is written in the part by Piatti. Make sure to lift one's thumb off the D string to have the harmonics sound. The main body of the work has a melody on the top played as eighth notes and the accompaniment on the bottom. The accompaniment sounds like this. And then the melody sounds like this. The key to this is to is all in the bow. We start with the bow on the G string, then we go to the D string. What this is doing is it's using the D string placement of the angle as the anchor for the entire caprice. That means that we have to have a very subtle a very subtle exchange between the consistency of the D and the uh, presence of the melody on the A string. What I would encourage you to do first is to practice without the left hand. Trying to keep the D string as consistent as possible. the difference the difference between the uh, location of the bow on the D string and the A string is actually uh, uh, very minimal when you get to the thumb position it loses a great deal of resonance because we don't have any open strings so that takes a little bit of careful practice to make sure that you can have enough bow to use. Don't be shy in making the bows faster when needed. So. One bar per bow works with the resonance of the open string. 
from here. If I use two bows per bar, it increases the resonance, something you might consider. For practice, even though every second, fourth, sixth, and eighth note is not coinciding with the note performed on the A string, we still have a lingering effect of intonation. So I would encourage you to practice to get um, uh, whatever your intonation desired into the hand without um, dropping the top pitch. That interval is still in the listener's ear, even though we're not hearing it actively. In this passage, I moved to two bows per bar. For that whole passage, you see and hear that I'm elongating the notes that are played as double stops on the D and the A to give it more expression to the melody. So I'm actually not playing completely rhythmically. I'm actually taking the top note and put imbuing it with a little vibrato, a little expression to make it sound more believable that it's actually two cellos. At this point, Piotti drops the eighth note, eighth rest um, pattern that he's been using in lieu of a held note on the top. So this, now we need to pay very close attention to whatever note is being held, that it doesn't have inconsistencies in the tone because the notes on the bottom are alternating. Even here, if I were to play in a traditional position, it would be much more strain on my hand to achieve this the, the consistency of the top note. So I actually angle forward. So the fourth finger does not touch the A string. Leaning forward, vibrato. At this point, some unorthodox hand positions have to be employed. Taking the third finger to play this tritone is very important to bring the hand closer in the wrist forward. That whole passage um, takes a lot of quick shifting, especially to the thumb fifth, which brings me to an aside about thumb fifths. A lot of the uh, moments that we play thumb over two strings, we need to have a brilliantly tuned, perfectly tuned fifth. And so I would suggest taking your thumb, experimenting with the weight principle that I've talked about in previous videos, and practicing some scales in fifths as the strings get to be higher off the fingerboard as you get toward the bridge, the weight principle needs to adjust. And so it's important to have that thumb fifth across the entire instrument.